time, you can jump in if you're not sure, but I just feel like I should go through all of these. All right, I think that'll be helpful. Plus anything that, um, you know, anything that you forget, you can see it on the video. All right, so I'm gonna just um, get started here with slope of the line. So again, remember M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And remember it's X1, Y1, X2, Y2. So it's just 16 minus nine over negative three minus one. Seven over negative four. Does everybody see that? So correct answer was A. All right, next one, which is not linear. Now remember, linear just means can be put in the form y equals mx plus b. All right, that's definitely A is linear. B, you need to write down if you forgot, that's a vertical line. Now C, oh yeah, that's just a typo. This is B, sorry, everybody. When I was typing these up, sometimes that mess things up. That's B. All right, so C is a vertical line. C is okay, that's just like Y equals one fourth X. Notice you're never dividing by X or dividing by Y, right? So the correct answer has to be what? D, all right. Linear means vertical? No, linear means it can be written in this format, Y equals MX plus B. Oh, you, oh like you can solve it? Right, exactly. This, remember, is a vertical line. You should just automatically know that. So that's linear. All right, anybody else have any questions with that one? All right, here we go. Slope. Again, M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. 3 minus 3 over 5 minus negative 4. 0 over 9, which is 0. All right, 0. Remember, if zero is in the denominator, that's when it's undefined. All right, but right now zero is in the numerator, so zero divided by nine is zero. Also, if you forget that, you can type it in on your calculator. Zero divided by nine, it'll say zero. Then try nine divided by zero. If you try nine divided by zero, it'll say error. What? Thirty-five. In the 2005, there were 12,000 students. And in 2010, there were 12,250. What is the rate of change? I need everybody to highlight rate of change. And that's a fancy word for saying what? Slope. All right, that's the slope. So now to find the slope, we want the change in students divided by the change in years. How did I know that? Because the answer is 250 per year. So I'm changing the students. So I went from 12,000 to 12,250, which means I increased by what? I increased by 250. And then that was over a how many year period? Five year period. All right. And so if I divide that, that's just going to be what? 50 students per year. All right. 50 students per year. Any questions with that? Any questions? All right, here we go. So to graph this, the y-intercept is zero. So you plot the point zero, zero. And then because the slope is two thirds, that means you go up three and right two, just to make sure. So zero, zero, up two to the right three. So A is out. Zero, zero, up two to the right three. So B is out. Zero, zero, up two to the right three, C is out. Zero, zero, up two to the right three, D. All right, 
How many times have we graphed a line? Thousands. All right, anybody have any questions so far? All right, like I said, sorry it's a little boring, guys, but this is how you review. All right, stay focused with me. Hopefully you did these. What is a slope intercept form? So the first thing I want everybody to do is write the slope intercept form. Y equals MX plus B. Y equals MX plus B. Now the slope is five, so that goes for M. The Y intercept is B, so that goes right there. Y equals five X minus eight. There it is. Everybody good with that? All right, now let's look at 38. X minus two Y equals four. We wanna put it in the right format. Y equals MX plus B. So we're gonna move the X. Negative two Y equals negative X plus four. Divide by negative two. So Y equals one half X minus two. So that means you go down two, up one over two. So this is your line, which to me looks like line P. Anybody have any questions? All right, 39. Vertical lines. Remember, vertical lines are always X equals something, just a number. All right, so the only one with just X equal a number is what? No, A has X and Y. A has X and Y, so that's no good. C, right, is just trying to trick you. So that would just be three X equals two, so X equals two thirds. Correct answer was C. Which one is the horizontal line? Um, B. B is the horizontal line. Make yourself a note of that. B is the horizontal. Horizontal is always Y equals. Vertical is always X equals. All right, now we have to write in standard form. So those of you guys who forgot standard form, remember I want you to write AX plus BY equals C. So you also, have to, you also have to remember that A is always positive. So if you just remember that alone, you can eliminate what? A and B. All right. So now let's get to the work. Y minus three equals negative two thirds times X plus one. You're not allowed to have fractions. So we multiplied both sides of the equation by three. So that creates a three Y minus nine. Then if you multiply the right side by three, this three cancels. Now you distribute the negative two, that becomes negative two X minus two. Now, how did I know that the answer was C without going any further though? Can anybody tell me? because it says what, three Y, and C is the only one with what, three Y. So I agree with that. What? How'd you get Y minus three? Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I, I thought it was a three, but it's a what? Seven. It's a seven, right, I'm blind. Thank you for that. That's supposed to be a seven. Right, and then that would be a 21. Sorry about that. That's a 21. But still, did it change anything really? No, because we knew the answer was had to have a three Y in it. But I appreciate that. All right, so now I'm just gonna show you, we want the X on the same side. So I add two X to this side and I add 21 to this side. So it's gonna be two X plus three Y equals 19. Anybody have any issue with that? Make sense now? Yeah. What? Why don't you have like a 
You can if you want. It'll be the same answer, right? I just don't like multiplying by negatives. Wow. Didn't we already see number 41? Yeah, that was kind of silly. What's the correct answer? D, right? All right, 42. Okay, now this one, all right, we need to find the slope. So I'm gonna pick two points that are on the graph. So I'm looking at this point right here. I'm looking at this point right here. So I'm going up and over. How many did I go up? How many did I go over? So I know the slope is what? Two over one, which is two. So I know the slope has to be two. Because I know the slope has to be two, I can just go ahead and say, that's no good, that's no good, that's no good. So I didn't even have to find the y-intercept. Everybody okay with that? All right. Now I have to write the equation given two points. If I'm gonna write the equation given two points, I'm going to find the slope. M equals three minus negative five over six minus two. Eight over four equals two. Anybody have any questions? Anybody? So I knew the slope was two. So then I just cross out A and B. Now for me personally, I like to use the point slope form. So Y minus three equals two times X minus six. So let's review that point slope Y minus Y one equals M times X minus X one. And I chose the positives. So I plug six and three for X and Y and the slope in. Now from there, I'm gonna put it into slope intercept. So I distribute the two Y minus three equals two X minus 12. Now I add three to both sides. So y equals 2x minus 9. The correct answer is D. Everybody okay with that? All right, here we go. Now, right off the bat, the only possible answer for 44 is what? If you just know standard form, what's the only possible answer? C, C is the only possible answer because it can't be negative. Now, let's just review this though, because I don't think it's gonna be that easy. All right, does everybody understand? I want everybody to highlight zero, negative three and tell me that is the what? No. That's the y-intercept. This is the slope. So because I know that's the y-intercept, I could write it as y equals two-fifths x minus three. Everybody with me on that? Now you're not allowed to have fractions, so I need to multiply everything through by five. Five times y. Two fifths times five is, and then five times negative three. Now we want the x and y on the same side and I want the x to be positive. So I'm gonna bring the y over here I'm gonna move the 15 over here. So it's gonna be 15 equals 2X minus 5Y. And then just write 2X minus 5Y equals 15. All right. But that was easy if you just remembered the rules. X can't be negative. All right. Okay, so now we have to write this in point slope form. Point slope, so you gotta, you gotta read the directions. So point slope, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So the y coordinate is negative five. So it's gonna be y minus negative five equals negative three times x minus zero. So y, Uh-oh, y plus five equals negative three X. 
All right, I made a typo here. What's the correct answer? B, please change that for me. I'm sorry about that. I need to correct that. All right, sorry about that, guys. Everybody check number 45. Please fix that. All right, please fix that. Okay, so now 46. If your slope is zero, you are a horizontal line. You are a horizontal line. And horizontal lines are always Y equals. So it has to be B because look, the Y value here is negative three. Everybody okay with that? Vertical lines, remember our X equals. All right, so if I said, which one has a slope that's undefined, slope that's undefined is vertical. So that would be A, all right, if they ask for undefined slope. All right, now I need everybody to highlight parallel. And parallel means that they have the what? Same slope. They have the same slope. So what's annoying is I have to figure out what the slope of this line is first. So let's come down here, 12x minus 3y equals 10. Negative 3y equals negative 12x plus 10. Now I divide by negative 3. So y equals 4x minus 10 thirds. Do I really care about this negative 10 thirds? Do I care about the negative 10 thirds? No. no, I only care about the slope. So the slope of the parallel line is gonna be what someone? Four. four. The slope is going to be four. And what point do we want it to go through? Yes, so put down negative five, three, and I have a point and a slope, so I'm gonna use point slope form. So y minus three equals four times x plus five. Now I wish you would speak up now if you're not sure about that so far. Now we have to put it in slope intercept form, so we have to distribute the four. So y minus three equals four x plus 20, then add three, y equals four x plus 23. So y equals four x plus 23, that would have been what? D. Now, because we knew the slope was the same, we could have easily eliminated A and C, all right? Now, 48. If line Q has a slope of negative three eighths, then the perpendicular, what would the perpendicular be? Slope of the perpendicular would be what again? Someone help him. Just eight over three. Remember perpendicular lines have opposite signs. And then you do the reciprocal. All right, then you do the reciprocal. So correct answer for 48 is what? C. All right, anybody issues with that? All right, let's take a look at 49. A line of best fit might be defined as a line that contains all, that connects all the data points. That's silly. A line of best fit, remember, if you have data, which we worked on a lot, it would just be a line that goes through as many points as possible. A line that might best estimate the data and be used for predicting values. I think B is clear winner, right? Anybody have any questions with that? All right, 50. All right, now it's just a matter of you just figuring out that 1995 is about 5.5. So all of these are still good. 
And then the next one is a little bit more than six, but it's definitely not in the year 2000. So these are out. B and C are out. Now, 2005 or 2004? 2004, right? So correct answer is A, everybody okay with that? That's just being careful plotting points. All right, now find the slope of the line of best fit. Come on guys, now you get your calculator out. This is on the test. You have to be able to do this. Stat. Then you hit edit. And then under L1 and L2, L1 are the X values, L2 are the Y values. This is X, this is Y. Then after you plug them in, you go to stat, go over to calc, and then go down to number four, which is linear regression. Has anybody done that yet for homework? You might do this. What is it? B. Somebody said B. Yeah. It is B. All right, so what was the equation of the line? Y equals 0.283X plus what? Anybody else get that? I mean, how do you solve it after you like I, I don't I didn't understand you. I'm, Trimble, what do you need? Like after you're at like the graph, how do you like solve it? I'm not understanding your question. after the graph, I don't have a graph. No, like the plot. Then you hit stat this bit this part right here. Do you see this up here? Then you go to stat, go over to calc, and go down to line. Number four, I think. And then enter all the way through. Now, 52, you have to use this equation for 80 shots. So if I take 80 shots, I'm going to put 80 in for x. Everybody type in 0.283 times 80 plus 0.56. And what is that approximately? Uh, 23. 23 point what? Yeah, so if I were estimating, that's a little too close for me. Did anybody else get 23.2? If it's 23.2, we'd say it's about 24 then. Wait. But I'm not saying that's true. Someone said it's 23.2. I need, I asked people to type in 0.283 times 80 and then plus 0.56. Using the line of best fit. What did that come out to be? All right. So we circled D then. Good on that or not? You good or not? I have a question. What? Where did you get the, the, the point fifty six? From the calculator. Oh, that's yeah. That's the other line. Yeah. Right. Anybody have any issues? I'm getting ready to move on to inverse. Okay, inverse, we just did what? We switched the X and the Y. That's what inverse means. So 53 would be negative one, four, negative two, three, nine, six, five, eight. That's what I got, C. All right, now to actually calculate the inverse, remember, you would say y equals 3x minus 4 
And then what do you do with X and Y again? Switch them. So X equals three Y minus four. Now you solve for Y again. So I'm going to add four to both sides. So X plus four equals three Y. Now I divide both sides by three. So it looks to me like Y equals X plus four over three. Now, the F negative one, I want everybody to remember that's the symbolism, that's the symbolism for inverse. So X plus four over three. Now, again, that's not something you can reason, reasonably figure out on the test if you don't know something. That's something you just have to remember. Finding the inverse, switch X and Y. All right, anybody have any questions? Finding the inverse. Nobody? All right, let the fun continue. All right, so now we're gonna solve this. Negative 51 is greater than or equal to, or is less than or equal to x plus 38. So we subtract 38. And so we have negative 89 is less than or equal to x. However, we write the x first. When I write the x first, you change the inequality sign. So it becomes x is greater than or equal to negative 89. C is correct. Anybody have any issues with that? Now remember interval notation, this would be a bracket negative 89 to infinity. All right, now number 56, go. Right, remember what I told you this. If you ever have trouble, if I say two is greater than one, if you rewrite it, you would say one is less than two. Right? Uh, you don't switch these. Yes. You with me on this? Yeah. All right, so now we're adding three eighths to both sides. Adding three eighths. So X is greater than one half is four eighths. We don't need a calculator for that. All right, if you forgot, then take a look. Now, yeah, that's embarrassing to do one half plus three eighths on your calculator. Make sure you can convert that. So that means X is greater than what? Seven eighths. Seven eighths. So if it's greater than seven eighths, it would be starting at seven eighths and heading to what? Infinity. Infinity. 57, we just multiply both sides by negative two. However, when you multiply by a negative, what happens to the inequality sign? Switch it. Switches. So that means T is less than negative eight. If I'm less than negative eight, remember, negative infinity to negative eight. There we go. Anybody having any issues? multiply or divide by negative, you change the inequality sign. All right. So now I'm going to divide by negative 3.5. Do I really have to do 42 divided by 3.5 or can I just look at my answers? Because they're all what? 12, right? You just have to decide if it's positive or negative. So positive divided by negative is a, so Z has to be, yes, but what sign? Greater than, thank you, because you divided by a negative. So Z is greater than negative 12. That means you start at negative 12 and you go to infinity. All right, here we go, 59, uh-oh. Sorry guys, I don't know why that. Here we go, sorry, I don't know what happened. Okay, 59, now what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna grab it and put it someplace where I can do all the work. All right, here we go. So to me, minus, 4w, because I want the w to be positive. Then I'm going to add 20. So now I have 14 is greater than 2w. 
divide by two, seven is greater than W. And if seven is greater than W, that means that W must be less than seven. W must be less than seven. A. Any issues with that? All right, let me grab 60. We're going to do the same thing. All right, here we go. Now, again, most people forget to distribute the negative, so be careful. 8R minus 5R minus 4, greater than or equal to negative 31. 5R or 8R minus 5R is 3R. Add four to both sides. Three R is greater than or equal to negative 28. So R is greater than or equal to negative 28 thirds. Where did I make a mistake? Oh, look at that. Sheesh. Starting to sound like rivers. 27. Sound like your secretary. Yeah, seriously. It's starting to sound like my secretary. Thank you. So R is what? Greater than negative nine. R is greater than negative nine. Wow. All right, so that answer is what? B. Thank you. B. All right. So which one of these is less than negative three? So A is less than negative three or less than one. Well, I'm sorry, guys, I made another typo. Or greater than one. Yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be greater than one. Sorry about that. I'm glad I'm fixing it right now. Okay. Hold on, change that, please. Right now, everybody change that. It was? Oh, wait, no, it's no, you're not. Yeah, change that for me to greater than. Everybody fix that, please. Fix, fix, fix. Should have been Y is greater than one. Now, does everybody see how A, Y is greater than one? All right, I want everybody to take a look at that because I messed that up. Anybody have any issue with that? Anybody? All right, so correct. I'm listening. So, but it said or, so I'm just wondering, would it only have to be one or both? Both. Or, remember, it has to be true for one or the other. Or, right, I know it's been a while. Or statement. And means they're running together. This would be the and statement. This would be if y is less than one and y is greater than negative three. Okay? All right, here we go. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so here we're less than or equal to two, less than or equal to two, wow, greater than negative one. So correct answer is D. Are you okay with that? Anybody have any issues? Tremble, you good? Okay, now number 63. All right, this is how I taught you to solve these. Subtract five, subtract five, subtract five. So that gives me negative nine less than three T less than or equal to 15. Now we have to divide both sides by what? Three. Negative three is less than T, less than five. Yeah, we did compound. That's all right. That's why we're reviewing. It's not a big deal. Well, yeah, it would be A. You see it? Good. What? You got it? Yeah. All right. Perfect. Here we go. 64. 
Yeah, we're gonna, now we have to do them individually, right? So we're gonna do this one first. So we add four, so, and subtract four T. So we're gonna add four, subtract four T. So now I get negative three T is greater than or equal to 12, right? And then we divide by negative three, which does what? Change. So X is less than or equal to, is it, isn't it negative four? So I'm less than negative four. Less than or equal to. So it's no, we know it's not A. Wait a minute. Yeah, we know it's not B or D because it's not solid. Do you, you agree with me? So it has to be C but we'll just finish it. So you add 4t to both sides. So 7t is greater than 14, divide by seven, t is greater than two. So now open circle at two. You with me on that? This was an actually an SAT question. Um, Yeah, so we're gonna to have to just, this is kind of annoying. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna graph, or we're gonna to have to do all four, A, B, C, and D, which is okay. All right, so when you solve an absolute value inequality, you write it the way it is. So I want everybody to write X minus two is less than three. And then I want you to remember, you write it again, change the inequality sign, change the value. All right, so notice on the second equation, I changed the inequality sign and changed the three. Change the inequality, change. Now it's really basic, you just add two to both sides, so X is less than five. The problem is this says X is what? Greater than five. So it's not A. All right, so because it's greater than, I also now can say, okay, it's not going to be what? It's not going to be D because that says less than also. Does everybody agree with me? Now, let's go ahead. One second. One second. Does everybody agree? It's, it has to be C because it says greater than or equal to. So that's the solid dot, not the open dot. So I know the correct answer is C. And then what I'll do is I'm just gonna go ahead and solve C for you just to make sure. So again, remember when you're solving absolute value, you write the original X minus two greater than or equal to three. Then you write X minus two, change the inequality signs, change the value. Now, when I add two to both sides, it becomes X is greater than or equal to five, X less than or equal to negative one. And there you have it greater than or equal to five, less than or equal to negative one. So the correct answer was C. I really think you guys should put a star by that. All right, you should put a star by that and go review absolute value inequalities. All right, Austin, thank you for waiting. Yes, exactly, thank you. Automatically, you could have just eliminated A and B from the start. That's exactly correct. And again, I'm trying to teach you how you can take standardized tests better, all right? Understanding a few basic things. All right, last one for today, 66. Here we go. Now, again, we're just gonna rewrite it. 2X minus three is greater than four. 2X minus three is less than negative four. Adding three to both sides, 2X is greater than seven. Dividing by two, X is greater than seven halves. And seven halves is 3.5. So if I'm greater than 3.5, I see D and I see A. So right off the bat, I can eliminate B and C. Now over here, two X is less than negative one. X is less than negative one half. Uh-oh, 
So less than negative one half. So the only difference is this one's positive, and because this one's negative, then the answer is what? A. The answer is A. Everybody okay with that? All right, I, I think that's a good, good lesson for today. All right, so now, um, my homeschool peeps, everyone is trying to work on the systems of equations, which should be the easier one because we just did that. All right, so get that done tonight. All right, good job, guys. <laughs>